A subscriber request video. Somebody asked me if I could do a video on Soviet tank destroyers, a brief history. So this is it. Real tanks, a brief history of Soviet TDs. But it ain't that simple because there's a lot of them. So I've had to split it up into two parts and this is part one. All we're going to be looking at are tier one to tier six Russian tank destroyers. And kicking us off is this little beastie, the AT-1, which is the first Russian TD that you come across in the game. It l it runs around in Tier 1, and therefore you would think that it's the first Russian official TD. Well, you'd be wrong, because it's not. This is the SU-1. The SU, by the way, stands for Samohodnaya Ustanovka, which actually means in Russian self-propelled installation, oddly enough. And the one in this instance means it's the first one, that's all, nothing more. And it's based on the T-26. Only one of them was built, they didn't particularly like it, and in 1945 they decided to upgrade it to this, the AT-1. Now AT in this instance stands for Artillerysky Tank, or Artillery Tank. Again, it's basically an issue one, but it's been upgraded. Thing is, only two of these were ever built, both in 1935, and strictly speaking, it was a prototype, and nobody liked it. So, in, you have to appreciate, in this period of time, the Russians were merely experimenting with these type of tanks, which led them to this, the SU-5-1. This was built in 1934, again, it was only a prototype, and only one of them was ever built. And this was, again, another upgrade of the SU-1. That also was a bit pants, so they developed this, the SU-5-2. Still based on the T-26 chassis, this time, instead of the smaller gun on the 5-1, they upgraded it to 122mm Howitzer Mod 1910-30. 30 of these beasts were planned, but only one was built. But the Soviets were still unsatisfied with that tank, so they upgraded it yet again. This time to this tank, the SU-5-3. And they put on a 152.4mm mortar, Mod 1931. Again, only one was built. It was only built in 1934, and it was a disaster. So they remodeled everything yet again and came up with this tank, the SU-6, which was basically a T-26 with a little casemate and a 76.2mm anti-aircraft gun mounted on the top. Again, the Soviets didn't think it was that good. And only one was built at the planned four in 1935. But Russians are never to be despondent and they pressed their head with trying to get a tank destroyer and came up with this, the SU-26. Now, this tank is still based on the T-26 and it came in two versions. One with a 37mm gun, of which you can see there, and one with a 76.2mm gun. Now, 14 of these tanks were built in all two with the 37mm and 12 with a 76.2. They were used in the Leningrad front during the siege. Uh, that's a propaganda picture, and they were destroyed there, I believe, and there are no vehicles surviving anymore. In fact, there is a picture of one of the destroyed SU-26s at Leningrad. But the Russians have finally cracked it. They thought they had a winning thing, and they moved on to this tank, the SU-76. Now, unlike the su 26 um, and all those variants which was based on the T26 chassis this tank is based on a T70 hull they were built between 1942 and 1944 and they were by far one of the most popular TDs the Russians ever fielded oddly enough with almost 15,000 of these things being built 
There's a T70 there, that is what it is based on. And it's still based on a light tank chassis, which meant its armor was very, very thin. But ever since Stalingrad, the Russians have been really impressed by the German Stugs. So they came up with this, the OSU-76, which stands for Universalnaya Samochodnaya Atelierra, which is basically all-purpose self-propelled artillery. And it was quite a success during the trials, although the armour was paper thin. That led to the development of this tank, the SU-76. Or to give it its correct designation, the SU-76M, which is basically meaning the main version. Now, the Russian crews actually liked this tank, funnily enough. They, they liked its simplicity and the way it operated, but they gave it some quite affectionate names, such as Shuka, which means little bitch, or Galajopi Ferdinand, which means bare-assed Ferdinand. And the reason for those names was because of its lack of armour. Uh, but they did love it. In fact, they loved it so much it was mass-produced, and it came in two variants. 76M and the 76B which was basically the same tank but it had a fully encased fighting compartment. They also tried out this one the ZSU 76 which was basically the same tank but with an anti-aircraft gun plonked on the top. However that's not to be confused with this tank the SU 76I which is completely unrelated. The I actually stands for Innerstrandnaya, which means foreign, because this tank is basically a Panzer III, oddly enough. What happened was, during the Battle of Stalingrad, the Russians had actually captured a large amount of Panzer III's and Stug III's, and they set about converting them, because they liked them so much. What they did, they shaved off the turret, stuck a fully armoured encasement on the top, shoved in the same gun on the SU-76 and voila you have the SU-76I and there is one there. The Soviets produced about 200 of these during the war but they they were not that reliable and the reason they weren't so reliable was because spare parts. The Russians lacked spare parts unless of course they could destroy more Panzer III's or Stug III's so they weren't as popular as people think. However, they did exist, and some people have questioned whether they did or not, but they did. And there is a picture of one there in Moscow, just to prove the point. Next up, the Russians moved on to another prototype tank. This one, the SU-85B, as it's called in the game. Now in the game, this is a Tier 4 Russian tank destroyer, but this is an interesting life story on this little tank. Basically, it started out life as the SU-85A, and there is one there, which is a prototype. One was made in 1943, and it was a upgraded version of the SU-76, basically. However, it had a lot of teething problems. The upgrade was sort of a bigger gun and better armor, but it just didn't work. So the Russians tinkered again and came up with this, the SU-85B, the one that we have in the game. This has a bigger gun, and it has more armor. This was made in actually 1945. Thing is, whilst it had the LB 285 85mm gun, it still wasn't a very good tank. And by the time they developed it, it really was no longer useful. So again, only one prototype was made and they didn't really do anything with it. Sticking with tanks that uh, existed, but <laughs> never really made it past the drawing board, so to speak, is this tank, the SU-85I. Remember, the I standing for foreign tank. This is basically the upgraded version of the SU-76I, still based on a Panzer III, Panzer IV chassis, but instead of having a 76 mm gun, they stuck in an 85 mm gun. Uh, not many were built, uh, only a few were actually made, and it never actually saw any service during the war. And as far as I'm aware, there are no surviving examples. So that brings us on to the TDs proper. The first one being the SU-85. This is a tier 5 tank in the game, 
and basically it's a T-34 with the turret taken off, re-armoured a little bit at the front and a casemate shoved on the top. And it had an 85mm gun. But the thing is, this tank didn't start out like this. It actually started out as the SU-122, which unfortunately we do not have in the game. Which in itself was based on a different tank called the SG-122A. Another tank that we don't have in the game, and that is an SG-122A, and basically it's a Panzer III with a whopping 122mm gun and casemate placed on the top. Not many of these were built. Uh, that one there is actually a replica, it's not a real tank as far as I'm aware, and it's also in Russia. But it could be a real tank, I don't know, I didn't take that picture. This tank led to the development of the SU-122. There is an SU-122 that I saw at Patriot Park, Kubinka in Russia. And basically it's a T-34 with a casemate and the same 122mm gun smacked on it. That tank led to the development of this tank, the SU-85, the one that we do have in the game. Basically, same time as the SU-122, T-34 hull, casemate, but with an 85mm gun smacked into it instead. Now, the SU-122, there were 1,150 of those made during the war, and the SU-85, over 2,000 built from 1943 to 1944. However, the Russians weren't satisfied, so they took that tank and upgraded it even more to this tank! The SU-100, a tank that we do have in the game at Tier 6. Now, this was one of the mainstays of the Russian army with over 2,335 built. Basically, this was an upgrade from the SU-85. They changed the gun from an 85mm to a 100mm. They also increased the armour from 45mm thickness to that of 75 millimeters and it was a formidable tank destroyer uh, that's the prototype version there as you can see it's pretty much what we see in the game it's a t-34 with a big casemate and a whopping 100 millimeter gun however this tank is so good it's actually still in use by some operators today those operators being algeria north korea morocco romania vietnam and yemen so it's a tank that has lasted the test of time so to speak that a world war ii developed tank is still fully operational in certain parts of the world as we speak which brings us to our final tank the su 100y now, this is a Russian Tier 6 Premium TD in the game, and oddly enough, the tank it's based on does not exist in Blitz. This isn't strictly a TD either. This tank is quite a misnomer. It's in the game because it has a big gun, and it has a lot of derp, and it's tier, and it gives you something that is quite different. It did exist in real life, but for not the reasons that people think, i.e. it was never meant to be a TD. Basically, this tank was developed from this tank, the T-100, which in itself was a heavy tank prototype in 1939. And it was stupid. It had two turrets. <laughs> and everybody realised it was stupid. Two of these were built, but never really got off the ground. So the Russians had spare hulls. So in 1940, they decided to develop the SU-100Y instead and there it is there in all its glory sat in the Kubinka tank museum. Only one prototype was ever made and according to contemporary records it did see some service in the defense of Moscow but there's no actual record to say how it performed. All we know is is that there was one of them produced and there it is there so it survived the war. Anyway that has been the Russian TD's introduction, part 1, tiers 1 to 6. Part 2 will deal with tiers 7 to 10. I've been Fujit. By all means, comment, like, and all that jazz below. If you haven't already, please press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do, and it allows me to do even more content. Uh, if you play the game and you've got some decent replays, by all means, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com, or follow me on Facebook or Twitter, or even come and join my Discord server. There's a, a link in the below write-up. And until the next time, guys, I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy
tanking because that's what it's all about having fun and being happy